Happy New Year and welcome to the year 2021. Grace Bible Church and our online guests, thanks for being with us. This is a great way to begin our year centered on the Lord. Now, let me ask you, hasn't 2020 been a time of testing and proving? COVID-19 pandemic effects, increased racial tension, political and financial upheaval, relation, relational and emotional isolation, or even aggravation, to name a few. Aren't you so over and done with 2020? You know, so with great expectation and anticipation, 2021 begins. Let me ask you a question. What are you hoping to accomplish or achieve in this new year? What's the best version of yourself are you hoping to become? You know, not a New Year's resolution because we know all, how that happens, right? A few weeks, maybe even a few days, how about a few hours or seconds? Most of us don't have the re resoluteness or the discipline to see it through. Ha, 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 me. Let me suggest something a little different. Not a self-will generated, grit your teeth, white knuckle, hold on, no matter what, get her done determination, but a way that allows the grace of God to enable and empower us to be and to do what is really important, a way to grow deeper in our relationship with God. So let's join our Every Nation family in seeking God first. Around the world, our churches will be sharing this message series, Awesome God. Over the next six weeks, we'll focus on the Lord's name and his nature expressed in scripture. The awesomeness of God revealed through encounters with women and men led them to worship, transformation, and mission. So let's pray. Father God, please open our eyes and our hearts to perceive more of who you are, your greatness and your goodness, your love for us, and your mission for us in 2021. Amen. Amen. You know, the message is, 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 begins this year like this. I've always loved watching the movie, the classic, The Sound of Music. Do you remember that scene, especially when the, Maria, the character Maria, Maria is teaching the Von Trapp children to sing? And she goes, I won't sing high. Let, no. Let's start at the very beginning. It's a very good place to start. And she says, when you read, you begin with, what do you guys say? A, B, C. <laughs> and when you sing, you begin with Do, Re, Mi. Come on, singers. Do, Re, Mi. Yeah. You know, it's the beginning. Guess what? It's the beginning of this year. It's the beginning when you read the Bible. The first book of the Bible is in Genesis. Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. You know, whatever translation you use, there's about 760,000 words in the Bible. That's quite a bit. But the first four words in the first book of the Bible is, in the beginning, God. Side note, I'm kind of geeky in words. Genesis, the first four letters as we use it in English, gene, it means seed. All of the major topics and streams of thought follow from the seedbed of Genesis. So in the beginning, God, what did, he, what did he do? God creates with his breath and his voice. He says words, and it was good. Day one and two, God creates light and sky. It's good. Day three, dry land and plant. It's good. Day four, sun, moon, stars. It's good. Day five, sea and flying creatures. Good. And day six, land animals and man. When God creates man, he says, not just good, it's very good. If you're sitting in your room, tell your neighbor, you're very good. You're very good because God created you. Day seven, God rests and reflects. He separates it from all the other days of work, the Sabbath. He kind of like catches his breath. Not necessarily because, oh, I tired. Six days, I made all this stuff. No, he rested in reflecting on what he created and it was good. It was holy. It was separated for him. Because he's the God that breathes, breathes. 
the breath of God. Genesis 2, 7 says this, And the Lord God, see, Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. He breathed his life. He breathed his very essence into you and I created after God's image. In fact, that name, that name that we're talking about today, Jehovah, means the self-existent or eternal God, the Lord, Jehovah. Let me give you a little background of that word Jehovah. Actually, more literally, it's Yahweh. And Pastor Greg really loves this, and, and when I researched it also, it really struck something in my heart. I'm going to read this. This is a quote from someone's uh, journal, a devotional about God. And um, listen to this. As we Christians spell and pronounce it, the word is Yahweh. In Hebrew, it's a sacred tetragrammaton. Y-H-V-H, or Yad, He, Re, and He. I'm told that those, those are the only consonants in the Hebrew alphabet that are not articulated with lips and tongue. Rather, they are breathed with the tongue relaxed and lips apart. Yahweh, Yahweh. When considered in this way, God is suddenly as available and accessible as the very thing we do constantly. We breathe. Exactly as some teachers of prayer say, stay with the breath. Attend to your breath. The same breath that was breathed into Adam's nostrils by this Yahweh. Genesis 2, 7. Can you imagine? God forms Adam from the dust of the earth. And then he <sighs> breathed his very essence into Adam. And Adam became a living soul, a living being. It's so interesting that, that COVID-19... It's a fight for breath. I have a friend that, that is struggling right now to breathe because of that very thing. We're praying that God would breathe his breath into so many lives that they would live and continue on in their lives. Let me continue this reading. Yahweh was considered a literally unspeakable word for Jews. And any attempt to know what they were talking about was in vain. As the commandment said, do not utter the name of God in vain. All attempts to fully think God are in vain. From, other, from God's side, the divine identity was kept, excuse me, the divine identity was kept mysterious and unavailable to the mind. And later on, you'll hear um, Sean talk about this. When Moses asked for the divinity's name, he received only the phrase that translates, I am who I am, Yahweh. This is from Richard Rohr's devotional. You see, the breath of life is God and is from God. God has always initiated revelation and relationship with us. Let me say that again. God has always initiated revelation and relationship with us. He is the self-disclosing disclosing one. See, he shows up in the Bible as God who breathes Peace. He offers healing, provides guidance and protection. He appeared as himself or through messengers, angelic or human. He uses circumstances and even difficult seasons, seasons to breathe revelation into our souls. Therefore, pay attention. Like a disobedient man, after he sinned, God reveals himself, say, but the Lord called to the man and said, where are you? That was Adam. How about a creative entrepreneur pivoting on a dime, hiding in a wine press? And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, the Lord is with you, O mighty man of valor. That was Gideon. How about an engaged teenage girl? And he came near to her and said, greetings, O favored one. The Lord is with you. All these, God initiated revelation, initiated relationship. And a confused, insecure, selfish college student, Randy, 
But Jesus said, take heart, don't be afraid. It's I. As a college student, just learning how to worship, God revealed himself at a college camp. He did. We were just extending, had an extended time of worship to God and just loving him, loving him, praising him. And then he allowed me to see a vision of hands playing on a keyboard, just practicing. Then he impressed on me that I would travel to different places doing worship. Joined the Grace Bible Church worship team at that time. I was in a Christian music group that traveled around the islands and we'd have concerts all over the place. I was, I was a part of that team that was selected on these, just like a, a Christian, uh, what is that, Brown Bags to Stardom album. Selected for that, playing in the Waikiki shell and on and on, blah, 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 blah. But really, that, that was just because God met me and gave me a revelation of who I could be and where I could go. But, you know, with that revelation required a response of obedience to practice his presence, ours, to practice the piano. And most musicians don't like this, to submit to mentors and authority and leadership, to overcome my fear and insecurities, to take steps of faith. Let me say this statement. Whenever Jehovah or Yahweh showed up, something or someone had to change. God said this in, in Malachi verse 3, 6 says, I am the Lord. I change not. So who has to change? What has to change? We have to change. So that revelation from God requires a response from us, either our worship or idolatry, which is false worship, or obedience, or our disobedience. How will we respond to God's goodness and greatness at the beginning of this year, as it were the Genesis moment for us in this new year of 2021? How will we respond? Will we allow him to breathe into our lives and give us strength and hope for this brand new year? So I got my good friend, uh, Sean Castro. He's going to come up and continue to, to talk about this, uh, this concept of who God revealed himself to in the Bible and the results from his response. Come on, Sean. Thank you, Pastor Randy. That's so true. Revelation from God requires a response from us. And we see this clearly in Scripture as we see Jehovah God revealing himself to Moses. Now, Moses was the adopted son of Pharaoh's daughter. He was raised a Hebrew by birth, but was raised in the palace. See, at this time, his Hebrew people were in slavery and were forced into slave labor. But one day, he saw a Hebrew and an Egyptian fighting, and he intervened, killing the Egyptian. Word got around, and he fled for his life from Pharaoh and even left Egypt. And we hear, here we pick up the story in Exodus 3, and we find Moses 40 years later, but now as a shepherd, it was far different from the palace life that he experienced before, for it was one of the humbling, most humbling, lowliest, and unexciting jobs that he could ever have. He wasn't wealthy either, for he was tending not his own flock, but his, the flock of his father-in-law. So you can see that he was in this moment where he was just out in the fields, just seeing the mundane, everyday uh, life and the rolling mountains and all that, and him hanging out with the sheep. And all of a sudden in Exodus 3 verse 2, it says here, there the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So can you imagine you out there being in the fields and then all of a sudden you see this a bush on fire, but it's not burned or charred at all. I'm sure all of us would stop what we're doing and take a look at it and walk in closer. And that's exactly what Moses did. Now when the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Now God tells Moses that he sees the misery of his people in Egypt and he hears the cries of suffering that they're going through and that God himself was going to do something about it. And he will rescue his people and set them free from slavery and bring them into the land of blessing. And the scripture goes on in Exodus 3.10. Now here's a crazy part. God says to him, 
So now go, I am sending you, Moses, to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said the most important thing that Moses needed to hear, and this is actually the most important thing that we need to hear as well. And God said, I will be with you. And scripture goes on. And then Moses said, but what if they ask me, what is the name of this God who sent you? What do I tell them? Then God said to Moses, I am who I am. And this is what Pastor Randy shared with us a little bit earlier in the message. God was saying that he is the Lord. He is the uh, self-existent one. And this is what you're to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. Say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. So what God is doing there is he's reaffirming his covenant promise that through Abraham's uh, descendants, that the whole world will be blessed and that him, uh, through his descendants, uh, Isaac and Jacob, that it will continue on and this covenant blessing will continue on uh, to where we are today. So with that scripture here, we're gonna take two things that I feel is gonna be so important for us as we go into 2021. And the first thing that I'd like to leave with us here is to seek God first daily and join us for prayer and fasting week. So God spoke to Moses when he took steps towards being in his presence. So what does that look like to seek God and to be in his presence? It means setting aside time every day to read the Bible. For reading the Bible is God's direct way he reveals himself to us. And here's a picture that I want to share with you guys. This is a picture taken of me around the time I put my faith in Jesus. My friends who discipled me uh, they share with me to read the Bible for myself and don't just take what the, uh, the pastor is speaking up on stage, but for me to take a look at the scriptures myself. And I remember going home that night and searching my house for a Bible and I was able to find one and here it is. This is actually the Bible that I read when I was 19 years old uh, going to Liberty Community College. And I remember that I had a one hour break between my classes and I remember I would pull out this Bible and then I would go into those little cubicles and then I would open up uh, to the book of Matthew because I didn't know where to start. But my friend said, you know, get to know Jesus for everything is about him. And if you take Christ out of Christianity, it's nothing. So I began to like look for where Matthew was and I began to, uh, and then I found it. And then it was there. I spent time with God for that one hour, just reading all throughout that entire time. And the amazing thing was God began to reveal himself to me through the scriptures. A lot of the things that I heard about God was based off of an outsider looking in perspective. But as I began to read the scriptures for myself, God began to speak to me. And a lot of the questions that I had and a lot of the doubts was answered just by simply reading the scriptures for myself. Imagine how powerful it would be if we were all take the moment and to uh, read the scriptures every day and to allow this holy and righteous and all-powerful God uh, to speak to us. And the interesting thing about getting to the, the scriptures when I was at that age and getting to know God, the more I began to understand how holy and how powerful God was, the more I began to realize that I was unholy and that I was unrighteous. And I knew deep down inside that I was an extremely fail, a frail and imperfect individual. And the more I got to know God, the more I recognized my need for a savior and how I needed a Lord to rule over my life. For at the time, I was the Lord of my life and I was making decisions that not only hurt myself, but hurt others. So I needed a Lord to surrender my life to and give me a new direction for my life. And I remember before leaving the little cubicle I was in, I remember I would pray and I would talk to God and I would ask him, God, you know, forgive me for my sins, you know, strengthen me. Uh, to be different, you know, affirm me with your love. And I remember even praying and asking God to change me from the inside out. See, there's something powerful when we set aside specific time with God and to seek him. So when we do this simple thing of doing that, our relationship with God develops and we desire this, this, this uh, wanting to be in his presence and to spend time with him. So this year in 2020, will you take this step to seek God daily? And you can start now, it's not too late. Start by simply reading a chapter a day and choosing a book. For me, I started in Matthew because I needed to uh, get to know who Jesus was. And maybe that's you today. I'm gonna encourage you to start there. Start from Matthew 
and read one chapter a day and just sink it all in and allow God to speak to you through it and pray and uh, ask God to strengthen you and to reveal more of his love to your life. And as we do that, as we continue to spend, with, uh, spend time with God daily, join us for a prayer and fasting week starting from January 11 to the 14. You know, uh, Pastor Randy shared about it earlier in the message and he will share a little bit more at the back end. So when we set aside that specific week of our time uh, into getting to know God, growing in a relationship with Him, and having that daily spending time with Him, our relationship with Him will grow, especially during that prayer and fasting times. So, um, so when we take intentional steps towards being in His presence daily, God begins to reveal more of Himself to us and the mission that He calls us to accomplish. See, when God revealed Himself to Moses, He revealed the mission that He had for Him to accomplish and it's true for us that as we spend time with God, He will reveal to us exactly what He wants us to do. Maybe it wouldn't be 20 years, 30 years down the line. Maybe He would just give you some wisdom for the moment, maybe for the season or for the week or month that is coming up ahead. God will give you some uh, ideas on, on what to do if you're feeling stuck, especially in your faith and in your journey. So the second thing I wanna leave with us here today, that as you seek God daily, is to rely on God. So as you seek God, as you uh, put your focus on Him, God begins to reveal what He calls you to do. And that as He reveals that to you, we need to rely on God. Not rely on our own strength or our own capabilities. We need to rely on God. So we need to pray and take steps towards being who God is calling you to be this year. See, in Exodus 3.11, it said, But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? So as we park here, it's interesting to, to note that 40 years have gone by and uh, 40 years earlier, Moses was trying to lead his people by simply taking uh, to being the, the judge over the people and to be able to, to lead his people out. But there was nobody that was down to follow him. But here, 40 years later, he was so uh, dejected and, and he felt so inadequate that he even said to God, you know, who am I that I should do this thing? So many of you last year have experienced that same thing. Many of you have asked yourself, you know, who am I that I should do this or that last year? Maybe you're a teacher and you're in a place of influence and you had to move your in-person classes to online. And you said to yourself, who am I that I should teach online? You know, who am I to do that? You know, what is Zoom? You know, I don't even know how to use technology to be able to do all of our meetings online. Maybe you were on the other end. Maybe you're a mom or you're a dad and now you're working from home. And maybe you found yourself saying, you know, who am I that I need to be like a teacher's assistant? You know, I'm here trying to balance my work and now I'm at home trying to uh, have my kids focus on their classes. And how am I supposed to do that when uh, I have a lot of work to do? Maybe you had to transition to working from home and you, had to and you found yourself saying, who am I to do my work at home? It's so hard for me to stay focused. See, for me, during this pandemic, I personally had to work uh, with our youth and our college ministry team, and we were trying to figure out how we can be able to, uh, to do ministry that would always be in person to something that would be online. And for us and our team, we, we planned and we strategized. We, we planned to uh, plan things ahead like a month or two in advance, but there were times when we had to adjust weeks before, and it was so frustrating at times, and I'm sure like our team felt it as well but we had to adjust because of the pandemic. You know, as days went on, it was hard to really plan, right? And the same thing is, when all of us, last year, there was at some point, we felt inadequate, and we felt like we didn't have enough. We felt we didn't have the enough smarts to, to utilize technology. We didn't have the, 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 the ideas to transition, like our businesses and the work that we need to do that was in person to transfer that online. And there were so much stresses that came up out of it. And for myself, in 2020, it was a huge blessing because my daughter was born on January 1, on New Year's Day of 2020. So when the pandemic happened, I was really going pretty crazy because I was being a new dad and I was trying to figure out how to work from home, how to have meetings on Zoom with a lot of our college students and our, our youth and having our services online. And on top of that, I had my daughter with me and had to uh, have her with me on the bed as we have our meetings together. And 
you know, at times I felt so guilty because she would be there on the bed and then she'd be trying to get my attention. But at the same time, I was in a meeting or, or maybe I was working on the computer and I was focused. And I don't know about you, but for me, when I'm working, when I was single especially, I was so focused. I could focus for several hours straight and do what I needed to do and get it done. But after I got married, that changed. And uh, I really love my wife because she really challenged me to put boundaries on my work. So I was working on that for about five years uh, in our marriage. And now having a newborn daughter this year really threw me for a loop. For now, I couldn't even focus for like five minutes without my daughter getting my attention. And I, I was really at uh, attention in my life because I wanted to be the best dad for her, but I need to get my job done. And I was in living in that tension. And I know that many of you here have experienced that last year. You felt like you were in over your head. You felt like you didn't have the, the strength or the mental capacity to be able to take care of your family, uh, your friends, or even uh, the work that you needed to do. So with all of that said, remember this. Remember that who you're becoming is important. See, God is not just concerned in what you do this 2021. He's also concerned about who you're becoming. And as we rely on God, we need to pray and take steps towards what God has called you to do this year. See, whatever God reveals to you, it's, this, it's just not for yourself. For what God, God has called us to do is always tied in to the relationships with the other people that's in your life, whether it's through your, your work, or whether it's through your family or your friends. When God calls us to do something, it's always tied up with the relationships that we have. And we need to take small steps towards whatever that is that God has called you to do. And I want to share with us uh, this video uh, that I have. And this video was taken, um, I believe, in early December. My daughter, uh, I was with my daughter. We were, my wife was at the office working. And there I was with my daughter trying to take care of her. And I remember I, I got up to go into the kitchen. And then all of a sudden, I turn around, and then I see my daughter holding on to this little easel walker thing. And when I looked to her, she started like taking a few steps. So I grabbed my, my phone camera, and then I started to film her a little bit. And as, as I filmed her, um, this was her. She began to, to, to walk forward, and then she didn't care. She was like uh, looking forward, and at times she would look at me, and then she would kind of bulldoze over the little carpet that we had, and then she would bump uh, towards the table that was in front of her. So I moved it to the side, and then at one point she moved forward, and it looked like she was about to fall. So I kind of jumbled my camera because I was going to try and carry her and try to catch her. But thank God she continued walking forward. And when I think about this simple video, I think about how, how God must be like to us. See, God desires us to take small steps with whatever it is that he called you to do. And in those moments when we are in God's presence, as God leads us to what he wants us to do, God is doing something in the supernatural and in the natural. God is orchestrating things beyond what we could see. He's moving things out of the way in order for us to, to get to the destination that he calls us uh, to, to go into. But not only that, he, he wants us to trust in him in every step of the way. So this 2020, what is it that God is calling you to do this year? Maybe in 2020, in January, you were really having high hopes. You were praying that since it's 2020, I'm going to have clear vision for the year and you have clear goals that you wanted to accomplish. But all of a sudden, the pandemic hit and you're like, man, what the heck? A lot of things that you planned for, a lot of things that you wanted to do got, got postponed and then eventually got canceled because of the pandemic. So what is it that God has still placed in you? What burden has he placed in you to, to start or to develop? I want to encourage you to take that time in this upcoming week to seek God first and to ask God, okay, God, what is it that you want me to do? And I believe that God is going to meet us at our place of need and that he would reveal to us our next steps. As we close today, imagine what it would look like if you're to seek God first daily. Imagine you setting a portion of your day to spend time to read the Bible and to pray whatever it is that God is speaking to you. Imagine that the closeness of your relationship with God as you do that. And imagine what it would look like for us if we were to pray and to fast along with the entire church 
along with all of our every nation uh, churches around the world, to be seeking God together and to figure what it is that God is calling you to do this year. Imagine what it would look like for us to become the people that God created us to be. For remember, the more you spend time with God, the more God would reveal the different character things and the things that he wants us to, to work on in our lives. And imagine us becoming the people that God has created you to be, having that Christ-like character in everything that we do. And imagine what it would look like for us to do what God has called us to do. Imagine you accomplishing the goals that, that you once had last year in 2020. Imagine you accomplishing it this year and to see the lives being touched and the lives being impacted through your simple steps of obedience to, to trying something new, to, to put into action the ideas that you have and the things that you want to see happen. Imagine what that would look like for us at the end of 2021. So as we close our message today, you know, maybe God has speaking to you throughout our service. And maybe God has been speaking to you that in 2020, you began to realize that the circumstances that you were in was revealing the inadequacies that you had in your heart. Maybe at a certain point during the year, you felt as if you didn't have enough mental capacity, you didn't have enough wits or even talents to be able to, to, to do what you needed to do, to teach your kids online, to balance uh, work and uh, taking care of your family at the same time. Maybe that is you. I wanna take a moment to pray that God would meet you in your place of your inadequacy and that he would strengthen you this year and that you would have that courage to know that God is with you and that he will strengthen you and give you the wisdom and even the, the mental capacity and the strength to do what he's called you to do this year. So let's pray. Lord, I pray for all those who are joining us here at this very moment, God, that you've been speaking to them throughout the scriptures, that you are Jehovah, God, the all-powerful, the sustaining one that's able to meet us in our place of need and give us the wisdom and the discernment that we need in order to fulfill the purpose and call that you have for us this year. And we pray, Lord God, that you meet people in their inadequacies. God, we humble ourselves to you. God, we, we, we know that we are not able to, to do the things that you call us to do because we don't have the, the smarts and the capacity to be able to do it. But God, we know that with you, all things are possible and that you, God, are one to be able to give us the wisdom uh, that we need in order to fulfill your purpose. So God, give us that wisdom, give us that discernment so that we can be obedient to your call and fulfill whatever it is that you want us to do this year. So thank you, Lord. Help us to become more like your son, Jesus, that was so obedient to our heavenly father. So thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You know, maybe you are here today and throughout this message, you've begun to realize that, that you've been on journey in life, but you never really put your faith into Jesus. You never received Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. But throughout this message today, you began to realize your need for a Savior. You began to realize the inadequacies that you, you've had and you've noticed that you've done things alone and you did things on your own and you felt so tired because you were at your wit's end. But the awesome and beautiful thing about God is that God is able to meet us in our inadequacies and even in times when we feel so down on ourselves. And God is able to meet us in our place of need and give us the, the faith and the courage to move forward. God will also forgive us of our sins and that he would give us his Holy Spirit to empower us to live courageously and to live above the circumstances that we, we may come through and encounter this year. So if you're here today and you wanna put your faith into Christ for the very first time, or you've been, a relation, you've been in a relationship with Jesus and you, wanna, uh, and you know that you've been straying away from him, but you wanna come back to God and you wanna have 2021 to be that year that you recommitted your life to Christ, I wanna pray for you. And all it starts with is this simple prayer and you can repeat after me. And this is a simple prayer that you can mean by simply speaking it out loud and believing it in your heart. So let's go ahead and pray if this is you. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. I believe that I'm a sinner. I believe that I have fallen short of your glory. 
God, I came to realize that I am inadequate and I don't have enough in order to, to make my life work. But God, I know that you can rescue me from my sins. I know that you can meet me in my place of need and forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me of all, of all unrighteousness. Come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. And lead me in your way everlasting. I need you, Lord, more than ever. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You know, if that is you and you put your faith in Christ for the first time or you're recommitting your life to Christ, man, I'm going to celebrate with you because that's the best decision that you'll ever make. And we want to help you take next steps. You know, if you could please uh, text New Start to the number on your screen. And also, uh, if you're on Church Online, you can click on the little icon that says Raise Hand. And we want to celebrate with you and celebrate that decision that you've made. And we want to be able to walk with you in this journey of faith and to help you experience this life-changing beautiful relationship with God. I don't know about you, but this calls for celebration. You know, as we start this new year, you know, we want to be able to worship God and thank Him for all that He's done in 2020. And we are in faith that He's going to do even greater things this year. Let's go ahead and worship. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you haven't done this yet, please subscribe to our channel for sermons, stories, and other really inspiring content. Uh, also, follow us on social media, and you can also download our Grace Honolulu app for updates. So stay connected with us. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day, and God bless you.